Hey yo, what's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today's video is gonna be regarding objectives. So this video is gonna be for jungle players as well as laners, cause some objectives require prio, some objectives require basically the entire team to be on the same page. So yeah, we'll basically take them in order from when they spawn and we're gonna be talking about when to take them and what you can trade for them in case that the enemy team plays for them before you do. So the first objective is gonna be Scuttle Crab, which spawns at 3.15 and uh, you could argue that this is simply a jungle camp uh, that junglers should just be taking but that's not always how it is because there's gonna be two Scuttle Crabs spawning, one in the top river and one in bot river and the way to play for them is you play for the lane that has prio and whatever lane has prio should be ready to move out of the lane to help the jungler with getting the scutter crab. Usually what will happen in most of the games is that one jungler will go for top scuttle and the other one will go for the butt scuttle. But in some situations you can actually get a double scuttle crab, which is something that you would always do if you have the opportunity to do so. And in those situations it's for example gonna be if you are pathing towards, if you know that the enemy is a full, clearing, full camp clearing jungler and he starts on bot side, then you know he's gonna be wanting to play for the top scuttle. So if you intentionally try to get to the top scuttle first and you get it before the enemy jungler gets there, then you can instantly rotate towards the butt scuttle. So if you can get a butt scu or a double scuttle crab, you should always play for that. But let's say that you're about to get double scuttle crab yourself, what would be something good to trade for the scuttle crab? So you can trade a killer and assist, because the killer assist will give you more gold um, then the Skull Crab will, whereas the Skull Crab will give more experience most of the time. There are also some si some situations if you get a kill you'll push the wave and getting uh, experience from both the kill and the minions that you're going to be killing will give more than the Skull Crab. So if you can trade a kill or you get an assist plus push in the wave then that's actually better to do than getting the Skull Crab. Or you can trade an outer jungle camp for the Skull Crab which will be the Grump or the Krux. It's pretty hard to do if you're playing as a full camp clearing jungler because they will always clear the six jungle camps before they get the scar crab. So in against the six camp clearing jungler, that's not really a possibility. Like you can't trade that because those jungle camps are already gone. And the last thing that you can trade is a buff, so red or blue buff. But that also in most situations, uh, the jungle buffs will already be gone. So the only thing that you can really trade is a killer or an assist most of the time. Otherwise, you just want to try and get at least one Skull Crab, unless if, of course, you can get that trade of a kill or an assist. Then the next objective is going to be the first Drake, and the first Drake spawns at 5 minutes. And uh, the benefits of getting the Drake is the fact that you get not that much gold, you only get 25 gold for it, but you get a permanent buff. But that permanent buff all alone is not really that powerful. Generally speaking, drakes are not really that good unless if you get all four, so you get the soul. But the soul is really, really good. Like, the soul is even better than getting Baron buff. And the reason why is because it lasts for basically the entire game. And it's basically like a pretty strong buff to, uh, to get. So what can you trade for the first drake? So you can trade a kill and assist or you can trade platings for the first drake or you can trade topside jungle camps for it. So if you can trade a kill then it's fine in most situations. It again depends because if the enemy team gets the first drake and you trade a kill that's good for you because you get more gold temporarily on whoever got the kill right. So let's say the enemy jungler solos the drake but you get a kill on topside. Well then both you and your top laner is stronger than the enemy jungler and top laner. Whereas the mid and bot lane will be slightly stronger because of the buff than your mid and bot lane. So if you can snowball with the lead that you have through top and jungle onto the enemy top jungle or, or transition the lead into other lanes as a jungler if you make a TP play as the top laner. Then you will just snowball and then you will get further ahead. But let's say you just get one kill um, and the enemy gets the drake and now they're gonna be stacking the second drake, the third drake, the fourth drake and you didn't do anything with that kill well then it would have been better for you to, to get the drake rather than trade a kill because you didn't really snowball with the kill 
that you got. Um, the other thing that you can do is take enemy topside jungle camps for it. So since the drake is on the bot side of the map, that basically means that if you see the enemy junglers either starting the drake or if you see that they just took it, stop taking your own jungle camps on topside and just instantly move into the enemy topside and take their uh, their grump, their blue, and their wolves. If top scout is up, you can take the top scout as well. And then maybe make a topside play, get some platings on topside, maybe make a dive, who knows. Whatever you can, basically try and get as much resources away from the enemy on top side of the map. So that's basically what you can trade for the first trick. Then at 8 minutes, the first Rift Herald spawns. And the first Rift Herald is actually really, really powerful. It's a really good tempo play, because with the first Rift Herald, you're guaranteed to get two platings. And those two platings are worth 320 gold, and the Rift Herald itself is worth 100 gold. So you're guaranteed 420 gold from getting one Rift Herald. This basically means that if you want to trade um, anything that needs to be more value than 420 gold at least. So preferably you want to trade two kills or get the first tower yourself before the enemy team gets the first rift tail. So if you cannot trade two kills or get the first tower before the enemy gets the rift tail and use it to get platings, potentially get three, four, maybe five platings, or they get the first tower, then you want to try and play for it yourself, because this Rift Hill gives you a lot of temporary gold. And even trading two Drakes, in my opinion, again, it depends on the situation, but if you can play with a snowball lead, um, basically, like, if you have a gold lead and you can snowball with it, I would actually gladly trade one Rift Hill for two Drakes, simply because it gives you so much more gold. Um, then, of course, with that lead, you would have to zone the enemy of getting the third Drake, but... You get the idea. Then depending on when you took the first drake, five minutes after that, the second drake will spawn. And again, the second drake, you can again trade the same things as you could with the first one. You could trade a kill and assist, platings, whatever. Or trade enemy topside uh, jungle camps for this drake. And again, the second drake doesn't really matter all that much if you can just trade something for it. And as long as the enemy team doesn't get four drakes. Because the enemy team gets four drakes and they get the soul, then the enemy team is just really, really strong for the rest of the game, and that's when the game gets tough. But you can trade the first two, two drakes without being worried too much if you can just contest either the third or the fourth one. Then after the second drake, the second rift herald will spawn. And the second rift herald is not as strong as the first one, because it doesn't give you any platings. At best, you can get a tier 1 or tier 2 tower, which is ni some nice gold, but again, it's not guaranteed, because if the tower is full HP, then it's not gonna be a guaranteed tower. But if you can get a tower with the Rift Herald, then yeah, it, it's it's a decent objective to get. But you don't want to throw the entire game over getting like the second Rift Herald. And I would actually, if I was in the situation where I could get either the second Drake, or I could get the second Rift Herald, it kind of evens out depending on how good the Rift Herald usage is. Again, if they don't get a tower with it, the Drake is better. If they do get a tower with the second Rift Herald, then probably the Rift Herald is still better. But Rift Herald, not nearly as strong as the first one. So you don't want to play as hard for that one as you want to do for the first one. Then after that, we'll have the third Drake spawning. And the third Drake, again, you can trade objectives. So you can trade like topside jungle camps for Drake, just like you could with the first and second one. But the issue is, when you give up the third Drake and get something else, you are forced to get the, every single other Drake from that point. Because it puts the enemy team at soul point, and you don't want to give soul to the enemy team. Because there's basically nothing that you can trade for soul that will make it worth for you. Even if you get the Baron, because Baron only lasts for 3 minutes and soul lasts for the entire game. So unless if you can end within those 3 minutes with the Baron buff, then it's still not worth getting the Baron buff compared to soul. So you really have to think about, is it better for your team to contest the 3rd Drake or the 4th one? If you're a hard scaling team, it's probably better for you to give the 3rd Drake and try and contest the 4th one and just stall out the game for another 5 minutes, because then you're all gonna be stronger. But let's say you're playing against the scaling team comp who got the first two drakes, then it's probably better for you to force a fight on the third drake, because the enemy team hasn't scaled all that much, compared to giving the third drake and being forced to contest the fourth one. That's something that you just have to look at team comps, and then you look at who scales better, 
And is it easier for you to contest the third or the fourth one? Then after that we have Baron spawning and if you are on three drakes, if you're in the team with three drakes, I suggest not going for instant Baron play because that can throw you the entire game. Instead just ward Baron area and then play for soul. So wait two, three, four, maybe even five minutes and you get the soul instead of playing for the Baron buff because if you force a fight on Baron and you lose that and you lose the Baron, the enemy team is actually back in the game. And those situations actually where most people actually end up throwing a lead simply by greeting for a Baron when all they need to do is just play slowly for the soul and then yeah just once they get soul start pushing or play for Baron after that because getting Drakes is a lot easier and taking Baron. Baron is so much tankier, does so much more damage and takes so much longer time to take compared to a Drake. So yeah, if you're the, on if you're the team on three Drakes, don't play for Baron, just play for Soul and after you get the Soul you can play for Baron. But let's say you're playing against a team that has three Drakes, then you could try and force a Baron in order to get back into the game. But again, you need to make sure that you actually end up getting that Baron because if you lose that then again, that's also GG, right? Um, and if neither team has three drakes, and it's like kind of even if it's one to one or one to two in drakes, then the times where you want to be playing for Baron is when you see enemy junglers on bot side, or the enemy jungler is dead, or the entire enemy team is dead, obviously. Um, or if you see the enemy team is basically making a play bot side, then you can, as a team, get the Baron, right? But you don't generally want to force a fight 5v5 on Baron because that's typically how people throw their lead and then the game like changes from yeah basically a team being like multiple thousand gold ahead to basically the game being dead even and then after Baron buff the team that just got the Baron will usually end up having more gold than the enemy and will start ending the game. Then we get to Soul and Elder Drake. So Soul is the best thing that you can get because it lasts for the entire game. So you always want to play for Soul and there's not really anything that you can trade that makes up for Soul. And then we come to Elder. Elder is really strong for fighting. So when people ask me like, is it worth trading Elder for Baron in those late game type of situations? It kind of depends. Baron buff lasts for longer time than Elder does. And Baron is really good for pushing, whereas Elder is really good for fighting. So it kind of depends how, like, what's your bigger chance of winning? Is your bigger chance of winning through split pushing, then Baron is better? Or if it's just generally like sieging, like let's say you have, uh, let's say the enemy team doesn't really have uh, any good wave clear, or they're very short range, or you have a poke comp, whatever. Then it's probably better for you to get the Baron and start pushing to end the game. Um... Whereas, let's say the enemy team has really good wave clear, or um, the enemy team can split push, then it's probably better for you to get the Elder, because that allows you to team fight better, and then you can force a team fight with the Elder, and then hopefully win that team fight, and the enemy team dies, and then you end the game. So, it kind of depends on your team comp and what like type of buff that you need. Um, so sometimes it's worth trading Baron for Elder, and other times it's worth trading Elder for Baron. It all depends on the game state and what team comp you have, and you basically just need to press tab and try and analyze it yourself. Because there's no real uh, one buff is stronger than the other one. It all depends on the situation that you're in. So yeah, those are basically all the jungle objectives that um, people should play for. Some of them mainly are just junglers. That should be trading, but other times it also allows uh, laners to get ahead or laners need to adapt towards a certain objective. So um, yeah, that's generally how you want to play for the objectives and that's usually how I play. And uh, you want to try and mimic that, mimic that as much as possible to um, basically increase your chance of winning. Because it's a lot easier to win games through objectives rather than kills. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like. And if you want to see more, remember to subscribe. If you have any questions, then leave it down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, check out my stream on Twitch or where Twitch TV says common score Cadix. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next YouTube video. See you guys.